I think we're working now. I think we're rolling. All right. Either way, we're starting. <laughs> Catch it on BitChute later. Uh, BitChute.com slash Sean V Planet. Uh, find all my stuff, all my podcasts and stuff on Sean V Planet channel on Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Podcasts, maybe some others. Um, you can send me handwritten letters, notes, artwork. Be my pen pal if you want. Um, send me stuff at S E A N C O R Y. It's my name. And the address is P.O. Box 330172, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203. Area codes are confusing because I, I work in a different area code. I live now in a different area code. And I my P.O. Box is in a different area code. So. And I'm new to town, so <laughs> I'm getting used to the three sevens. Um, but yeah, a little update. I have an apartment. I am moving in tomorrow. Uh, kind of a seedy neighborhood, but a nice little apartment complex. And when I say seedy, I mean I really don't mean bad at all. Everyone I've met there, like everyone that works at like a gas station in the area or just people I run into, bump into, seem unbelievably nice and friendly. So it's a poor neighborhood, but a nice and friendly neighborhood neighborhood for sure um i'm gonna just call off my my feud and debate with nick fuentes uh i think he's a little baby back bitch uh not worth my time he's too angry too negative and definitely just gonna be be running scared whenever he finds out <laughs> about me and my challenge to him uh it's not worth it he's gonna expose himself eventually as just being a fraud and a grifter and uh my main intention was just to kind of help not lead men astray into his pit of despair and anger and um but he's been exposing himself fast as just a fraud and a phony so his collapse is coming soon i don't need to help participate in it um so the nick debate updates are just going to be over <laughs> just call it call it off he's not worth my time um this is live stream 12 this is the live stream for the boys all my dudes out there all my all my bros out there just trying to be dudes um i'm going to tell you a little about, bit about my story my struggles in life how i've become a man in the last year and what's kept me alive and um improve my life and made me happy and release all the fear and anger and um the battle that is waging right now on society against men and for men so if you're a lady, if any of my lady friends are out there, uh, lady fans, lady friends, family, friends, um, F-R-E-N-S, friends, um, just go ahead and turn it off right now, and uh, I'll catch you next week. So um, I guess I'll just give you like a couple seconds here, like 10 seconds, just, you know, just, just click out, just exit out right now. Um, that'd be great. Um, it's not the stream for you. <laughs> not the stream for you. Um, this is for me and my dudes, my dudes here to talk. Um, so all my dudes that do come in on DLive, um, I'm not going to be checking the chat room um, while I stream. I'm just going to be ranting and rambling off my prepared notes here. And um, at the end, I'll get to whatever you're talking about in the chat room and answer any questions or cover any topics you want me to cover at the end. Um, but for now, I'm just going to kind of ramble about me and my life and stuff and things, you know. Um, so yeah, now that all the ladies are gone, right? <laughs> all right, all the ladies out there, you're out. You're, you're you're not here anymore, right? Okay. So dudes, what's going on? How you doing, bro? How you doing, my dudes? Let's talk about porn and drugs and becoming a man and uh, the kids we're all about to have in the future and how we're gonna raise them right and correct and overcome Satan's spell he's cast on us. And as always. Keep the faith, stay loyal, remain hopeful, stick true to those three things in life, faith, loyalty, and hope, and your life will just improve immensely um, every moment, every day, and over time. Um, those three things, just really in your mind, keep those three things in your mind. Stick true to the faith, be loyal, make your yes mean yes, your no mean yo, fulfill all your promises, even if they're not fun, even if they're um, something you don't necessarily agree with in principle. Remain loyal to yourself and to others in society and be hopeful. Remain optimistic, cut the despair, cut the negativity. Uh, fear is just a prayer to Satan and we need to stop doing that. We're feeding him with our fear and despair and we're killing ourselves. So 
remain hopeful <laughs> always stay loyal and first and first, first and foremost uh keep the faith um again comments questions all that stuff i'll get to them at the end um but for now i'm going to kind of dive into what i have prepared written here and i wanted to start this for the boys so again any girls here if you're coming in late uh please just log off don't you know get out of here this is for me and my dudes to talk about um so first i want to talk about my struggles in life i uh personally me sean corey i was raised by boomers who ran away from the faith um they had different different upbringings different families different um places they were raised in communities they were raised in one was an intense Irish Catholic and the other was a small town Christian, uh, I think mostly Baptist raised person. And they both ran away from the faith. They were boomers. They fell into just being boomers, drugs, party, rock and roll. Um, and they had three kids and I was the third and they made sure to keep us all far away from the faith. And it led us all astray. Um, my parents were atheists who failed me and they raised a lost, confused and broken little boy. And in general, they weren't good role models. They exposed me to sinners throughout my entire life. Just bad role models, bad influences on me. They let Satan's screens poison my brain. <laughs> they let all of these screens here just raise me, you know, TV, computer, everything. I learned everything on my own um, with Satan's um, propaganda, and it nearly destroyed my life. It really did. My parents never taught me morals. Uh, they instilled a, they never instilled a work ethic or any sense of discipline in my life. They just kind of let me do whatever I wanted, which was really fun. I had a really fun childhood, you know, as a teenager, just kind of being able to do whatever I want. Um, but I lacked discipline. I lacked, lacked respect for myself and for others. And never once did they, did my parents lead me towards the faith or towards our creator. And in fact, they would oftentimes lead me away from him. Then after all that, after <laughs> insane, insanely backwards, um, upbringing, they just kind of, you know, let me loose in society. <laughs> I was an 18 year old boy who had no discipline, no sense of work ethic, no sense of self-respect, no sense of respect for others. Um, I was just weak. I was a weak little coward, a little boy in a 18, you know, going on 20 year old boy's body, man's body. Um, and so, of course, I mean, in this insane society and culture we're in and, you know, this technology age that we're living in, um, I, of course, instantly and quickly became addicted to substances and mind altering drugs. Um, I spent my entire life, my entire early 20s, uh, just chasing women, having sex, just being addicted to porn, um, a lot of just party, 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 women, women, women. I avoided personal responsibility at all costs. I avoided working hard at all costs. Um, and in general, I just ran away from being an adult and I ran away from God. I ran away scared. I ran away in denial of just the faith and the truth of the Bible. <laughs> and it led me to a horrible, dark, miserable place. And I nearly ended it all. I thought I had no way out. I thought I had no solutions. I thought I had committed too much sin to be saved by any religion. And deep down inside, I knew God wasn't giving up on me. Um, I felt like I had a rope, like a, a rope tied around me <laughs> with God at the other end. Uh, and I wanted to so badly just run away and just keep getting farther and farther away from him. And I feel like he kept tugging on me and pulling on me and not giving up on me. But I kept drifting closer and closer away from the light and towards the darkness, thinking it was the right way, thinking it was the right path, um, chasing temporary pleasures of the flesh and just thinking I was really smart, thinking I knew it all and just slowly but surely drifting further and further away from the light and the kingdom of heaven. And thankfully, God did not let go of the rope <laughs> and kept tugging me back back towards him every once in a while. I get little pushes, little tugs back to, back towards him every once in a while. And um, I thank him every day for not giving up on me and not letting go of the rope because he probably should have a long time ago. Um, 
in 2018. So it's kind of weird that that's like two years ago now, but a year and a half ish, two years ago, I reached the bottom of the pit. I was swimming in darkness and sinking fast. I eventually gave in, um, had a few mind opening experiences and God definitely sent me the right messages at the right time and the right people at the right time. Just open my eyes to the light and the truth of the gospels and his word, his word and his works. And I started to just open my arms and open my heart to him. And he saved me. <laughs> I mean, he really, it's crazy that he saves. It's not just a bumper sticker. Um, I eventually, I found a sense of purpose, meaning and guidance from the true alpha. Um, someone I was always looking for. I was always looking to be, um, you know, not beta as in weak, but like a, the number two to a strong leader. Um, I've never really wanted to be a leader or a ruler myself, but I've always kind of had a sense of wanting to serve a right and just master and never found it in government, never found it in companies or corporations or um, any man, any man or earthly group, um, any cult or whatever grouping or, or led by other men. Um, but I've definitely found my true alpha last year, <laughs> two years ago now, I guess, 2018, the end of 2018. Um, I repented before him for my sins and for my failures and for my short sightedness. I thanked him often and I thank him every day for just not giving up on me and for sending me the light when I was lost in the dark. Um, and from that I've get, achieved and gained a lot of strength and courage and just an ability to overcome obstacles that is nearly undescribable with words. It's uh, amazing, <laughs> truly amazing feeling and sensation. Um, I began praying regularly, if not every day, um, asking for strength and for courage and a hand to hold as I detoxed, removed myself from bad environments and began finally putting in the hard work necessary to overcome my emotional, childish, lustful nature and grow up to become a strong man of God. The uh, Christian American man you see before you today, <laughs> alive, not dead, and loving, not fearful, um, faithful, not atheistic, loyal, not a degenerate piece of shit, <laughs> and hopeful and not full of despair. Um, the true alpha saved me and I thank him all the time for it. And I want to share that with you guys. I think I have been slowly, um, just trying to slowly push and share the truth of the gospels and how much it can help and save you and, uh, benefit you in your life. Um, with his help, I quit smoking cigarettes. I was a chain smoker. I smoked at least, at least every two hours, if not more. Um, I quit drinking alcohol altogether. I've had two two beers total, two different nights over the past year, two year and a half. So, and I don't really see myself drinking again until maybe like my wedding night. I don't know, some kind of super special occasion. I'll probably have a, a beer or two. Um, I quit smoking weed. I used to be a pothead. I would smoke all day, every day. Um, if I wasn't high, I would feel sad. So, I just kept smoking weed, <laughs> avoid being sad by just smoking the weed. And I did other drugs, other mind altering drugs all the time with friends, thinking it was cool, thinking it was expanding my mind and expanding my thoughts and that I was becoming really smart by <laughs> altering my mind with substances. I was addicted to porn. I would uh, definitely, I'd masturbate at least two or two, if not four or five times a day. Sometimes if I was in a real dark place, um, I'd use porn almost every time. And I always had sex with just women I should not have been having sex with, people I didn't really have really good relationships with. I took account and it, I think it has been 17 total women and hundreds of times total. Um, some of those 17 women I was in long-term relationships with for a year, one was off and on for a couple years and three or four of them were kind of like five or six month long relationships where we would have um, sex regularly with each other, almost always unprotected, just being a dumb idiot. And I, <laughs> since, since finding the light, since finding the truth, I gave it up. Um, to be honest, I didn't find, I mean, it was another two months after the last time I've had sex, which was 16 months ago now. It was um, near the beginning of October in 2018. Um, there was a couple months there where I was just striking out. <laughs> I was still a degenerate piece of shit chasing the pussy, but uh, 
uh, after about a couple months there, I truly just gave in to not having any sex, not putting my penis in anything warm for a while, <laughs> uh, years to be in fact, to be, uh, perfectly honest, because it's been 16 months now since I've had sex with a woman. Uh, I've never had sex with a man, never will. And it's probably going to be about 30, if not like 60, 60 more months before I have sex because I'm not dating anyone. I don't have that special person in my life yet. Um, and so hopefully I'll be meeting that person sometime soon. I feel like God has a plan for me to meet the the one sometime soon. I think that's kind of the reason he brought me to Nashville was I think the one is here. The one for me is here. And But it's still going to be another year or two before I – at least before I marry the one. So I haven't had sex in 16 months. Uh, holla at your boy. <laughs> Match that motherfucker. Um, and yeah, I probably won't for another like 50 or 60 more months. I, with God's help, I also quit um, sugar and carbs. I was off and on, on carbs for the last month and I have sugar every once in a while. Like, I mean, I have barbecue sauce with meat and stuff like that, where there's just sugar and everything, corn syrup and stuff, but I don't eat candy. I don't go out of my way to drink soda or anything that's full of sugar, or full of carbs. I work out every day. Um, if I take a day off, I make sure to double my workout the next day to make up for it. And I try every day to learn something useful at least at least one thing useful and productive every day um and i definitely i try to read the gospels every day um i just i just finished the gospels the new testament for the first time i'm rereading it right now and then i'm going to go back and read the whole bible after that um just to really soak in all of it and really appreciate and understand all of it in the whole entire context um, it can be a little confusing at first, especially the old timey English. <laughs> um, thankfully, I have a pretty good New Testament that kind of has like, um, I don't know what it's called, but like a little guide at the bottom that kind of explains confusing words or confusing topics. But um, yeah, it just is mind blowing <laughs> how much truth it drops and how much knowledge it drops and how much it'll just help you and encourage you by just reading it every day. And if not, I mean, read at least a chapter a week. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> it helps so much guys. And yeah, just cutting all the bullshit out of your life, working hard every day to improve on something, learning something every day, working out every day, like in improving your body somehow every day. I went from being 266 pounds at my worst. Um, I mean, I'm 5'10", so 266, I was enormous. I had a big gut, I had huge fat butt and a huge fat thighs and Everyone in my life would just tell me like, oh, you're okay. You're fine. You look fine. You know, you're not, you're not great. I would tell people, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like 250 pounds. And they wouldn't even believe me because I just kind of looked fairly athletically healthy, but I just kept dripping, drifting and drifting off and just not doing any work, any kind of workout or just any kind of um, dietary restrictions and floated all the way up, bloated all the way up to 266 pounds and Felt like I was about to die <laughs> and started asking them for help and guidance and just the motivation to really get this down. And I'm all, all the way down to about 210 right now. So I've lost about 56 pounds in less than a year. And it's been slow and gradual, not any kind of cheat diet, just a steady workout of just trying to run at least a marathon or my, I mean, my goal is 30 miles every week. I lift weights and I cut all the sugar and carbs out of my life or for the most part, um, and I just feel unbelievably healthy all day, every day. And workouts have become easier and easier. <laughs> so I can't recommend that enough. And I got to say all this improvement, all this motivation to improve, it's all thanks to him. Truly, it's all thanks to him. Um, whenever I have doubts or I make up excuses in my mind, I realize, I start to, I've started to at least recognize and pray and ask for strength and courage and the ability to overcome my fears and doubts um, from him above. And it helps me. It truly does help me and it'll help you too. And um, yeah, I mean, just doing this whole process, he's truly blessed me. He's blessed me with just unbelievable happiness and just the fear and doubt has just gone from my life. And I mean, everything about my life is just better. Um, the only thing is my finances aren't <laughs> are about the same. <laughs> like I'm not becoming rich and famous, but everything else in my life, my body's healthy, my mind's healthy, my spirit's fulfilled. Um, 
and it's all just thanks to him and I can't thank him enough. And I want you to join, I want you to try it for yourself. And if you have any kind of fears, doubts, if you're making excuses, um, just really truly start praying and asking for help, asking for the help, um, that you can't find within yourself or overcoming the excuses and the doubts and your thoughts that you seem to have trouble with. I wanted to read this passage because it really rings true to me. Um, I'm going to skip a couple of the parts, but it's, it starts at Galatians chapter five, verse 13. And it says, you were called to be free brothers and sisters. Only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. 17 says, Galatians 5, 17 says, the flesh desires what is against the spirit and the spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other so that you don't do what you want. 19 says, the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, envy, drunkenness, etc. That etc. is my part because there's more, <laughs> but that's definitely enough, enough uh, according to Paul, to kind of get the message across. But um, he finishes by just saying, I am warning you about these things, um, that, that collection of just things, the uh, works of the flesh. Um, as I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And that could not be more true. Um, it truly couldn't. When you start to just reject the temporary pleasure seeking and the things that make your flesh feel good, um, you'll start to realize that you actually become happy. <laughs> you're not chasing after being happy. You just naturally wake up every day and you're just happy. You just are motivated. You just feel good and you feel fulfilled. Um, you're not chasing it. You're not trying, you're not using drugs or alcohol or any kind of crutch or you're not pleasuring yourself or poisoning your mind in order to run away from the pain or the sadness or running towards, um, the good and the light, you just naturally have it within you. It just kind of seeps into your heart and into your blood and it's just there. Um, it's crazy <laughs> because the screens have taught us exactly the opposite. The screens and the companies and the governments, they've taught us to just keep chasing temporary pleasures, keep buying the products, keep pumping the drugs into you, keep watching the pornos. They, um, they want you distracted, they want you docile, and they want you buying their shit, and they want you obeying their rules. And when you stop doing it, when you stop giving in to the, the temptations of the flesh, not only do you regain your superpowers, your mind becomes useful and available again, but you just feel happy. You just feel fulfilled naturally. You don't have to chase after the happiness. It just really seeps into your soul all day, every day. And I mean, I'm a living example of it. I can't, I don't know how to say it. Out. <laughs> I'm not trying to brag or anything, guys, but I'm just trying to say like the results are here. <laughs> and the guy that was about to kill himself a year ago, that was constantly sad, constantly intoxicated, constantly doing drugs and jacking off to porn, constantly just chasing highs, smoking cigarettes to get little um, stress relief bursts in my life constantly. And now I just am just released of fear and anxiety and stress and constant, I mean, happy all the time. The worry is gone. The doubts are gone. I remain optimistic at all times. And it's all thanks to him. <laughs> it truly is. It truly is. It starts with him. It starts and ends with him. Um, and this just leads me to just generally, I want to talk about serving Satan because we are all serving Satan, whether you know it or not. Um, Fear and doubt itself are nothing more than prayers to Satan. Let me say that again, because that's been really ringing true in my head lately. and I can see it. I can see it and feel it now that I have a clear, clear eyes, clear mind, clear ears. Fear and doubt are nothing more than prayers to Satan. Excuses are of the devil. Excuses are of the devil. Your lustful, adulterous behaviors are works of Satan and it is ruining you, and it is ruining our society and our world. Porn and drugs are used like weapons by governments and corporations, i.e. the ruling class, to keep young men, 
docile, distracted, confused, and scared, angry, and um, hoping for something better instead of appreciating what, what, what we have. Our lustful behaviors and temporary pleasure seeking is used against us by Satan in order to prevent the creation of or even break up families. And it's allowing the women and children to be easily corrupted and pulled away from God's light. They, the ruling class, who worship and idolize Satan and use his power against us to maintain the ruled class and keep us in place, they are making us pleasure slaves. It's time to overcome it, guys. It really is. And just start rejecting the porn and drugs. Really just start there and things will start making sense. You'll really start to have clear eyes again and your mental superpowers will come back. And yeah, I mean, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Stop serving Satan. Stop making excuses. Stop having fear and doubt. Um, you're only serving him. You're only serving the benefit of the, the rich and the ruling classes when you are living a life of fear and doubt and anxiety and stress. You have to release it. And it starts with him. Just start asking him. Build a relationship with him. Um, him. <laughs> Not him. <laughs> and good things will come. Truly, they will come. Um, I want to read this before I kind of get into the war on men that's currently being waged right now. All the dudes out there, because I know there's no women here still listening, um, because they listened to me and logged out. Um, Ephesians 6.10, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, says, My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Do it. <laughs> Just do it, guys. Let's talk about the war on men. We'll get back to that. So here are some facts. You can fact check me at home if you want. Um, some of these might be wrong because I am did internet research. Um, duck, duck, go, not Google because fuck Google. But um, yeah, did you know there's a war being waged on us, dudes? I mean, can you feel it? Is it obvious by now? <laughs> is, it, is it obvious to you yet? I mean, are you just still jacking off to porn and doing drugs? You can't see that there's just this war being waged on us by Satan? Um, let's just start with just saying that men die five years sooner than women on average. Why do you think that is? Anyone? The biggest cause is drug addiction and overdosing. The second biggest cause is that men work dangerous and physically demanding jobs that shorten our lifespans. They're killing us, guys. <laughs> They're killing us and making sure that the children don't have fathers. Men account for 77% of all suicides. Um, again, they're making us drugged up and porned out and sad and unfulfilled in our lives. I'll say that again. All suicides. 77% of us are us. Men account for 92% of the prison population. All of the slaves are us. Men account for 98% of all mass shooters. All those drugged out, insane, deranged, violent people. Um, albeit, I know I'm not an idiot, guys. I know a lot of them are fake and staged or exaggerated. But they're all men. They're all us. Men account for 80% of all murder victims. We're killing them. They're killing us, guys. <laughs> We're killing us. They're killing us. Sperm counts and testosterone levels are plummeting. Researchers still to this day can't explain these phenomenons, or they just won't. They're literally making us not men, and they're making it un unable for us to reproduce and make more men. 70% of all American men are overweight and obese. They're killing us, guys. They're literally poisoning us. Women score dramatically higher on IQ tests and perform better in our educational system. That should be obvious if you went to a government school or college. Boys are failing in school. They are either not going or they're dropping out of college at alarming rates making us poorer and disproportionately wealthy in society right now. 
which leads me to the whole wage gap talking point, the myth that is the wage gap. And it's just that it's a total myth. The 70 cents on the dollar is a hoax. It's used for political gain by people. That talking point is that specific statistic. I mean, it is a real statistic, but it's skewed because it compares all women and all men in every single profession. It doesn't explain key factors like pregnancy rates, um, the differences of, of pregnancy and how it affects your work, parental leave times, working hours overall, men work more hours, and vacation time used. Women take more vacation time. Um, if you measure the same age in the same profession, women actually earn 8% more than men. Women are far less likely to be fired generally from their jobs or terminated over sexual harassment claims. And historically male professions are being, historically male professions are being replaced by robots and shipped overseas, or they're giving to female illegal immigrants. Single women buy their homes at twice the rate of men do these days. That is something that's new. It's never happened before in recorded human history. Research shows when men's wages decrease, families don't form or they fall apart. But as you know, if you're awake, if you're not still whacking off to porn or drugged out, women are always the victims. They're always the victims. Men are always the oppressors. And dudes, you know it, we face losing our jobs and or our reputations if we dare question that. There's a war being waged on us, guys. <laughs> if you don't see it, it's time to wake up. It's really time to wake up. Satan has been busy destroying the boys, the men, and the fathers. He's been busy and we've been asleep. We've been drugged up and we've been jacking off to his porn. Because the emotional nature of women is easier to manipulate and control than a man's. Satan wants a smaller and more easily controllable population. And strong men and strong family units oppose his schemes. And again, I'll read Ephesians 6.10. I'll read it again. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Because my dudes, it's time we woke up. It's time we quit all the fucking temporary pleasures, all the bullshit, drugged up mental mind altering drugs and drinks and whatever. Um, it's time we stop listening to his music and watching his movies. And it's time we start reading the Bible and finding Christ again and building families and raising strong children again. Um, we have to quit the porn. We have to stop the out of wedlock sex. We have to stop doing the drugs, um, the drunkenness, and start repenting and asking the Lord for help with all of it. We need the boys to become men like yesterday. <laughs> we need the boys to become the men. Take it from this boy, this 27-year-old boy who was going to end it all, who decided to, in fact, look up, ask for help, grow up, and overcome his, his weaknesses and develop into the man that you see in front of you today. Um. General, in general, I'm going to get to, I see you guys actually kind of talking in the chat. I'm going to get to it in a second. Um, I have it on another screen. Um, so I can't really see it. I can just see movement. Um, but I wanted to say just in general, porn is distracting us. It's making us unable and unwilling to start families, make babies, and respect women generally. We do what we are told to get our dicks wet. Turn it off. Save society. Reject the thoughts, that's T-H-O-T-S, reject them, kick them out, regain control of your mind, and then your life. Um, men who are scared or weak with their mothers have no chance of being strong, confident, or logical in, with any other woman. It all starts with your mom. You have to be strong enough and capable and confident enough to overcome what she did to you, the abuse she did to you, or the lack of care, the lack of faith she put into you or the lack of discipline she put into you and you have to overcome her. It starts by forgiving her, looking her in the eye and just saying, I forgive you for everything you've done for me. And from now on, we'll move on and have a healthy relationship. And from there you can start respecting women again and you can start treating them like the beautiful creatures that they are. And 
will start actually appreciating the bond that is marriage and coming together and making strong family units and trusting and respecting women to help raise, help you raise your kids. It all starts with a mom. Forgive and overcome your mom and stop being a baby. If you need help with that, if you need further instruction on that, check out my boy, Jesse Lee Peterson. He's waking up men, he's saving society, and he has great advice on how to overcome your mom and how to forgive her and how to move past the brainwashing and the indoctrination she's instilled in your mind and overcome the weakness as that results. And my dudes, it's, uh, it's time that you move out on your own. All my young dudes out there that might be living with their parents still, um, you have to move out. You have to live on your own. Um, even if it requires being homeless, I mean, that's what I just did. I was homeless for the last month. And it was the most unbelievably spiritually fulfilling month of my life. I learned <laughs> how to be resourceful. I learned how to be humble. I mean, it humbled me overall. It's made me appreciate things, material possessions, and my body and my spirit more. And it helped save money for a month. And now I'm moving into a beautiful apartment on well, tomorrow, on Friday. You have to eventually learn how to provide for yourself. And you have to work hard eventually and earn what is good in life. Save the sex for later. 16 months, guys, and it's going to be 50 more, and I couldn't be more happy about it. <laughs> the sex controls you. She controls you with it. And, yeah. I'll just end. Um, well, I'll end with this, and then I'll end with my last Bible quote. But in general, the boomers never grew up. We all know it by now. Um, obviously, not all of them. I fucking know. Not everyone. But overall, the boomer generation never grew up. They failed us as a result, the Gen X and the millennials. And it's about time we grew up. It sucks, but it's going to be fulfilling in the end when we are the generation that grows up and overcomes our parents and their lack of parenting and their brainwashing and they're leading us away from God and Christ and the faith. And eventually, my dudes, you got to be a father. You got to be a strong father. You got to have a bunch of kids, raise them right, teach them right. And, you know, make up for lost time and save, save future generations. I'm going to end with first um, Peter five, chapter five, verse eight. It says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil prowls around, prowls around like a roaring lion looking, what? looking for someone to devour. <laughs> I, said, I thought it said admire with my sloppy handwriting. I'll read it again just to be clear. Peter 5 8, chapter 5, verse 8. Be alert and of sober mind. I mean, they knew this 2,000 years ago, guys. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You have to stand up and be strong even in the face of the monster, even in the face of the beast. Reject his temptations, reject his pleasure, stop being slaves. So that's all. Thanks, thanks, my dudes. Thanks for putting up with my lecture, my little lecture series here. Um, I'll see what you guys are talking about in the chat and comment on that. Um, wow, a lot of people. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks, dudes. Thanks, dudes, for showing up. Um, any women that are here, I'm going to be booting you and banning you immediately um, because I told you many times to not be here. So Bruins Bear says, howdy. What's going on, Bruins Bear? Thanks for being here. Um, hello, Bruins. Says post jazz RDG. Ardiger. Ardige. Post jad jazzard. Um, Stuntman Bear says, hey, here listening and lurking. Keep lurking, my dude. Keep lurking. Post jazz, howdy, Stuntman. What's up, fellas? Yo, yo. What's going on, guys? Thanks for showing up, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate the questions and responses. Sean Averse, my boy, says God is good. 776 days chastity for me, man. Tomorrow is going to be that magic number, dude. 777. Congratulations. I'm sure your life is actually going well. <laughs> the screens won't tell you that. Your friends won't tell you that. But I'm sure your life is amazing as, as a result. Keep your dicks out of warm, warm holes and your life will improve regardless of what Hollywood tells you. Post Jazz says, voluntarily celibate since May 2017, two children that aren't adults and won't be for 2.5 years. So I'll be bare minimum six years celibate. 
Hell yeah, man. Keep it going, dude. For real. Keep up the good work. Your brain power, your spiritual power will be so much more fulfilled as a result. And I'm sure you know it. I'm sure you feel it. But other dudes out there, um, it's hard to explain because we've been so indoctrinated to believe that it's cool and fun to have sex and be pleasured all the time. But listen to these guys tell you, listen to me tell you, it's so much more fulfilling to just save it for wedlock. Um, save it for the one. Save it for the special one. Um, Dude, 5'9", used to be 260, but I wore it well until 235, so no one called me fat. I know. It was actually kind of hard because everyone in my life was so nice. <laughs> Fake nice mostly, but just nice and just telling me, like, oh, it's okay. I mean, I was also in San Diego, California, where people are just kind of, oh, don't fat shame anyone. Oh, don't, don't, don't hurt anyone's feelings. It's all about feelings. And uh, whenever I would just kind of get down on myself for being too fat or too out of shape, people would tell me, it's okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Don't work hard. Don't, <laughs> don't hurt your feelings. Don't get yourself down. And I just kept getting fat. And the second I just kind of started fat shaming myself, myself and motiv letting others know that I wanted to be fat shamed and just motivated in that way to just overcome and prove them wrong, I did it. And again, I mean, I feel like I keep saying it, but you ask him for help, you ask him for help and guidance, and he really shows you the right path and provides you with motivation to keep going, to get out of bed that morning you don't want to and go put in the work. Um, yeah, post jazz, same as me. I can wear weight well, even though I don't know it when I'm fat. I know, same with me. I just kind of look like I have a big beer belly, but it's like a really big beer belly. <laughs> I just kind of wear it well. Um, I do have like big thunder thighs though. So my pants are weird. Look, I, my waist is usually kind of small. I usually have a big, big gut, huge hips. My waist is like skinny. So my pants are always like 34, but I really have to get like 36s or even 38s just cause my thighs are so big. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> I'm down to a 34 legit. Now I'm about to start rebuying new clothes cause I'm starting to get too, too, uh, too skinny for them. So I'm about to be like a 32 or even down to a 30 soon. Um, still working on my thigh fat. <laughs> my thigh fat and my butt muscle. Um, yeah, I knew I was lying to myself. Indeed. Yep, like all vices, the only person you need to convince is yourself because you tell yourself lies. Stuntman Bear, that is so true. Um, the lies are of Satan. The doubts are of Satan. It really is just the thoughts are just Satan. The thoughts are leading you away from what's spiritually right, what you know to be right, and what you know to be true. And, um, you just have to overcome it. You really have to overcome it. If it's hard to do on your own, um, ask him, truly ask him, pray, pray to him for the help and the strength to overcome it. Um, I need to cut the ums. Sorry. I do the ums, ums, ums way too much. Um, <laughs> the only thing they're worse at than listening is keeping quiet. We'd know if they were here. That's true. That is true. Good to know. Yeah, good. That's comforting to know. Yeah. <laughs> They're so emotional. I got to be heard and they need the attention. They need the eyeballs and the clicks. Uh, expendable. American women are obese too. The average American woman weighs the same as me. Yeah, it's kind of true. Um, it's true and it's not. I mean, honestly, a lot of women are don't weigh enough in my opinion. Um, it's a little different here in Tennessee. I think everyone here in Nashville, like in Tennessee, seems to be like healthy. I was always told people in Nashville are fat, like the people in the South are fat. But honestly, I'm coming from San Diego and Los Angeles where people were gross. They were too skinny. Women were really muscular. Like they would go to gyms and lift weights and be like manly muscular. And a lot of dudes would just be out of shape. I mean, they, they would think they could just surf and then not do anything else and just end up being like, fat i don't know <laughs> and a lot of women there too would just be way too skinny i mean almost gross how skinny they were because they were too worried about their appearance um i don't know i'm not supposed to judge people's bodies or fashion but um i really do get a lot done says post jazz same issue as me thighs have always been massive yeah stunt man um yeah, i don't know i've always had big thighs I don't know if that's, that's genetic, if I'm never going to be able to get rid of it, or if it's, that's just kind of like the last place that the fat's coming off. But 
pretty much all the fat in my like neck, my arms, and I used to have big man boobies, <laughs> like legit man boobs you could like grab, and now they're kind of looking more like pecs. I just still have a little bit of my gut and my thighs, and um, just trying to turn it into muscle right now. So I'm eating a lot of protein and doing a lot of like weightlifting, a lot of like like ab workouts and crunches, a lot of um, squatting and like leg exercises, so that as I'm losing the fat, as I'm burning the fat off by not eating carbs. Um, I'm not losing the muscle. I'm not losing the ability and the, the strength for weight resistance that I have, the natural like weight resistance I've had to help actually gain more muscle. And it's been a good balance. Um, that's my pseudoscience take on how to work out he healthy. <laughs> Don't eat carbs, but eat protein and lift weights if you're fat and losing the weight so that the fat turns into muscle because that's how the body works, I think. Um, no one else commenting. I think I'm going to log off here soon, guys. Call it a, call it a stream. Um, send me any me last messages you have, any topics you want me to cover, questions you have, and I'll answer them right now. Um, as always, you can send stuff to my P.O. box. Um, I don't need money. I don't want money, guys, at all. If you really, truly feel like you need to donate to me or whatever, make it like a dollar or two. Um, or just something cool. Honestly, what I'd rather want, what I'd rather have you send me is like handwritten letters, notes, um, artwork if you do it, like cool little art or things I can like hang on my wall in my apartment. I'd rather have cool stuff like that in my life than financial gain. Um, if you want to be pen pals and not be like read on screen, that's cool too. I'll be here to just always give advice or have conversations. If you want to talk to someone in your life that's not your friends or your family, who can relate to a lot of things. It sounds like you guys relate to a lot of things I'm going through and a lot of struggles and problems I've had. Um, reach out and talk and I'll write back and we can have a little handwritten conversations with each other. Um, yeah, and just send me questions or topics you want me to read and open, you know, talk about live on stream in future live streams and I'll do that too. So you can send it to me. My name is S-E-A-N-C-O-R-Y is the last name. Uh, P.O. Box 330-172, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203. Again, no money. Just send me letters, questions, artwork, whatever you got. Um, you can catch all my live streams here. Um, if you're not watching live, you're obviously here already. But if you're catching the replay of this, you can watch me live every Thursday night. It's either going to be 6 or 7 p.m. Central Time. I want to do 7 regularly, but I might have to do it early sometimes um if my bedtime's early but that's dlive.tv slash sean v planet s-e-a-n-v-p-l-a-n-e-t dlive.tv slash sean v planet you can catch all my replays of the streams at bitshoot.com slash sean v planet um, i'm also putting on youtube but i probably will stop using youtube soon i just don't like youtube and google in general but I just kind of do it for now because I know some people don't really like or use BitChute. Um, but in the future, I probably won't have a YouTube channel. Um, I have different – different than my live streams, I have comedy podcasts I do. I have three shows on my podcast channel. One is where I interview and talk with comedians and do funny things. It's called That's Offensive. I have another podcast called – talk about art where I interview musicians and artists. And again, it's just kind of funny, funny and humorous and kind of more about like an artist or a musician's personality. And we talk about what they do, but it's less of a focus on how'd you meet? <laughs> What's your band name mean? Blah, 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 blah. The same old internet radio talk show questions. And then I have a last uh, podcast called hashtag Sean fights the internet, where I talk to people about just like internet debates, politics, conspiracies, news, that kind of stuff. Um, and so all three of those podcast shows can be found on my podcast channel, which is called Sean V Planet, S-E-A-N-V-P-L-A-N-E-T. And you can find those episodes, all those episodes on Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and just find everything, all the links to everything on my website, SeanVPlanet.com. And follow me on the things, Sean V Planet, Sean V Planet, Sean v. Just, just fucking just look up Sean V Planet and you'll find me on Instagram, Twitter. I think I'm going to start using Gab more because Twitter shadow banned me. Um, so fuck Twitter. But 
I'm going to be on Gab more. Um, I might start using Facebook more. I just really don't trust Facebook, but I use Instagram, which I guess is Facebook, which is cool Facebook. Um, but yeah, follow my audio podcast stream. Check some of those out. Some of them are really funny, like truly, really good and really funny and entertaining to listen to. Um, last few questions here. Stuntman Bear says, think it's partly jeans. No matter how slim and in shape I am, I have... <laughs> Bug B highs. <laughs> I think it's big thighs, what you meant to say. Big thugs, big thighs. Big thug thug thighs. Um Been good. Cheers, buddy. Thank you, Stuntman Bear. All the fat I get goes to my gut. Nowhere else says um Ducher Americaner. <laughs> I think that's South African, right? You're from South Africa, my dude. Uh Twitter buddy. Ducher, Dutcher, Dutcher, Americaner, Americaner, Dutcher, Dutcher, Americaner, Connor. <laughs> Regardless, I love and appreciate you, man. Thanks for all the support. Um, oh, it says German. It's German. Dutcher, Americaner. <laughs> I can't do a German accent without sounding like a Nazi. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks to all my dudes. Um, you can tell all your girlfriends and your sisters to tune in again next week. I'll be back here next week, live streaming, um, live stream 13. It's going to be, um, less of a presentation and <laughs> more of a chit chat and whatnot. Um, but yeah, hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions or if you want to talk to me about anything, if you want to get my response or, um, advice, hit up my DMs or write me a handwritten note. Again, P.O. Box 330-172, Nashville, Tennessee, 37203. And hit up my DMs, Sean B. Planet on Twitter, Instagram, Gab, all that stuff. And my name is Sean Corey. Thank you guys for tuning in again. As always, keep the faith, stay loyal, be hopeful. Do those three things and your life will just improve all day, every day. It really, truly will. I can't stress that enough, guys. It really, truly will. Excuses are from the devil. Um, stop making excuses, guys. It's time to grow up. The boomers never grew up, but it's time we did. And just in general, be good, do good, love and be loved. It's that easy. It's that simple. Um, truly is. So thanks again, guys, for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Thanks for, thanks for the comments and the questions. I'll see you next week. Um, same time, Thursday, next week, 7 p.m. Central Time. Thanks, guys.